Take your Bibles, go with me to John chapter 6, if you would. John chapter 6. I was planning to preach something different, but God's led me to this tonight. It's a very a simple message, I think, uh, with our children here. We've got a lot of them. It's a perfect thing for them. But John chapter 6. I love the picture of the feeding of the 5,000. Especially as you think about prayer and you think about what we're studying right now in our Sunday school about seeking the Lord in prayer and the praying church and, and how Lord teach us to pray. And, and, and of course, the Lord did so many uh, word pictures and, and parables, but he also did miracles that were pictures that were teaching the people. And even his disciples, uh, as the Lord who is our supply, <laughs> as the Lord who is our, our sufficiency, as in his hands he broke the bread and he, he broke the fish, and then the disciples had a basket that they could take and carry. And uh, you find in this, we'll see in this passage, verse 11, it's a two-course meal that they serve. The bread first, then the fish. And I think, man, that's why Longhorns does it that way. You get the bread first, you know. Just kidding. But, you know, it's interesting. Uh, it's a two-course. That's what it says. You see right here in verse 11. And, uh, but they had nothing to offer except what they got from his hand. I love that picture. He taught us to pray like that, didn't he? He said... The guy's coming at midnight. I need bread. And he says, though he would not give, get up and get him bread because it was his friend. He said, because his importunity does. And what's the point of that parable? And then he says, ask. The point of the parable uh, is, or that story is just simply that we have nothing. He says, I've got a friend that comes to me at midnight and I have nothing to set before him. And that, that picture in the feeding of the 5,000 of the disciples weren't the supply. They were just errand boys. They were just waiters, if you will. They were just those delivering and it's the same with us as we go witnessing, as we live our lives. We are not the supply, but we know the supplier. Uh, we can't save anybody, but we know the Savior, right? And what a privilege to have someone that is all sufficient that we can run to and we can go to in prayer. And uh, they were miraculously given food from the Lord's hand. And they, I could just see him running out and, and then going back. And there was always more. And, and the Lord never runs out, praise the Lord. And he is our supply. He's sufficient for all things. John chapter 6, the Bible says in verse 1, we'll read through verse 14. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And when Jesus had lifted up his eyes and saw a great company coming to him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. I wonder how many times in our life God is doing things to prove us. Because he, he knows what he's going to do. He already knows the end from the beginning. But he's allowing us to feel the fire, allowing us to feel that heat of the fire before uh, or that, da that lion's den before. and what, How's God going to come through and, and to see, to prove us? Do we trust him or not? Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. Christ is sufficient. He says, 200 penny worth of bread isn't sufficient, but he was standing with the one that is all sufficient. Verse eight, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there is a lad here. You ought to underline that phrase. There is a lad here, which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. So there was the bread they took and gave out and then came back and likewise now the fishes. Two course meal. Verse 12. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. And I want to bring this title tonight, just very simple. We see this young lad here, and he gives him his lunch. 
This is the title, Give God Your Everything. Give God Your Everything. Let's pray together. Father, would you help us? We would, in simple faith, a childlike faith like this lad, give you everything. Give you our everything. Lord, not just, we're not talking about just something as, as simple as money, but Lord, ourselves. Lord, as the Macedonian Christians showed us that they did not as we hoped, your word says, but they first gave their own selves to the Lord. Lord, that we would uh, give ourselves to you, we would surrender to you, we would give you everything. Thank you for your, this parable, this, or this uh, miracle, excuse me, and this uh, account here in the Word of God that we would glean and our faith would surge as we recognize how you work in the lives of people and use things for your honor and glory, and we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I've been to where this happened. The Bible says he's at, they're at the Sea of Tiberias. And, and uh, the Sea of Tiberias is like a big bowl there. It's a lake is what it is. And, and uh, there's grass around that lake. And I've seen there, uh, there's these little small bushes. And at the time of year we were there, there's yellow flowers and small bushes. And, and, uh, and these little sparrows flying all over to it. And it just, boy, so many things that you read in the scriptures about the sparrows. You know, God points there and says, look at these sparrows. Uh, they don't, Matthew chapter 6, they don't, uh, they don't uh, uh, plant or sow, and yet God feeds every one of them. See, the Lord used object lessons all the time. And, uh, and he would talk about, you know, two sparrows just sold for a farthing, or five sparrows for two farthings, and, and, uh, and yet none of them fall to the ground without your God. And, uh, and so we know from the other accounts that they had been there three days. It doesn't tell us that in this account, but if you compare all the feeding of the 5,000 accounts, They've been there a long time. They've been there uh, uh, hearing the word and, and loving the word and, and loving the word more than, than their physical meat. They've loved the, hear the, hear the, the Bible uh, taught and, and hear Jesus speak. And so they've stayed with him. And now he doesn't want to send them away. Again, we know that from comparing the other accounts, lest they faint along the way, lest they're weary. Uh, the Lord is not just interested in our spiritual needs. He's interested in all of our needs. We can pray about everything and bring everything to the Lord in prayer. Uh, certainly spiritual needs are the most important, but God cares about all of it. And we see here, as you look at this story, uh, first of all, I'm going to give you just three points very quickly. Number one, we see the lad. <laughs> Who was the nameless lad? Isn't that interesting? You can study all the accounts. His name's never given, but there's a lad. There's a lad here. There's someone with a lunch. Uh, sometimes they say we have five loaves and two fishes. It doesn't even mention uh, where they got it. But in this passage, there's a lad here, and he has five loaves and two fishes. And what do we know about this young man? Well, verse 9, the Bible says, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Well, first of all, one thing we could look at, he was a simple boy. He was a simple boy. Nothing special to report. He wasn't of Herod's court. He, he wasn't a, a son of the high priest. He, he was just a regular, regular boy, just an ordinary young man. Just a lad, according to the Holy Writ, he's just a lad. Just, there's a lad here, just, a, just an ordinary boy like you would think. He's a simple boy. Not only that, we find he was a silent boy. You read all the accounts, never a word is spoken as far as what's recorded. Now, I'm sure there was conversation that happened. The Bible says if everything that Jesus did was written, the world could not contain the books. But in the scriptures, he doesn't have any words recorded. His actions are recorded, but his name is not recorded and no words that he said was recorded. But most importantly and, and most valuable to the master, not only was he a simple boy and a silent boy, he was a surrendered boy. Surrendered boy. You know the Lord, and, and again, I, I, the Bible doesn't, I don't want to uh, read too much in the scriptures, but the Bible doesn't say anything about how this transaction went, went forward, but the Lord Jesus doesn't take or strong arm people. He doesn't kick the door down and, and take stuff out of your house. And, and he wouldn't have taken this lunch from this boy. This boy obviously offered it to the Lord. He gave it to the Lord. Lord, this is what I have, but you can have it. I, I love this. He's a surrendered boy because I know if it was me, I may have split it with the Lord. <laughs> How many of you been like that? You know, yeah, I'll give you some, but I want, and I'm probably taking the big half of this peanut butter and jelly, you know. And, uh, but he gave it all. God didn't tell him as far as we know. It wasn't like the promise that the widow woman got at Zarephath that this cruise of oil will not fail and this meal will not fail. Until the f 
He didn't have any promise that there would be food after. It might have been that the Lord Jesus was going to eat the food, so he had strength to keep teaching the people. And, uh, and so, but he gives it all. He surrenders it to the Lord. He didn't have much, but he gave God everything he had. Now, one th- some things we do realize from this story is the Bible says they're barley loaves. And if you study history in this time period, uh, this was the poor boy's lunch, the common boy's lunch. Now, this is, these are hot dog buns, okay, from Publix Bakery, but they were still in the basket, so I got it out. And uh, nothing be lost, right? And so uh, the deer, before the deer get it. This is too big, really. It would have been more like, I guess it's a hot dog bun here, but more like uh, probably a roll. You think of a boy, what's a boy going to eat? Uh, no boy's going to eat all of that and, uh, and, and two small fishes. And the fishes were probably like a sardine or smelt. Anyone ever had smelt? Up at Lake Erie, they used to get the smelt. Boy, I, I don't like sardines, but smelt were amazing. You take scissors and cut just almost the whole head, then you pull on the spine, the whole bone structure comes out, and you fry the whole thing, throw it in the pan. Boy, oh, it's good. And you'd eat them just in one bite. You had to get a lot of them, probably about 20 to feed one person. But they'd catch them uh, like crazy there at Lake Erie. We lived right on Lake Erie up in Canada there for part of the time. But anyway, a probably fish like that, a small fish. This wasn't a big bass. You know, little boys can eat two bass. It was something small, probably something that was smoked or salted that he could carry that, you know, didn't have to be cooked. It was his lunch. And yet the Lord takes his hands. So there's a lad, this lad. He's a a simple boy. He's a a silent boy. He's a surrendered boy. Uh, Secondly, I want to think of the little. (laughs) He says there in the verse that, that, what what is this? This is little. What is this among so many? Let me read the, the verse there and then we'll keep going. Verse 9, the Bible says, There's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Lord, this is just a little. We see the lad, then we see the little. This is just a little. This is just a small amount. What a question to the Lord. What are they among so many? All right, let me have uh, some boys. We've got a bunch of boys in here, so let's see. Come on, Gavin. Uh, come on up here. Let's see who we got back there. Emmett, come on up here. Uh, let me have brother, yeah, you can come. Uh, come on, Jared, Josh, come on up here and uh, with your boy there, yeah, good. James, yeah, I know, I know their names. Come on, Josh, yeah. Uh, you, you can be Jesus, all right? He kind of looks like that, right? That beard's almost long enough to pluck, right? Probably need a little bit darker skin, so not quite olive enough. So let's imagine the Lord Jesus is taking this, and now the boy was silent. Can you guys do that? All right, and so... God begin, the Lord Jesus begins to break the little and, uh, and begins to give them out. So I'll let you break, break a roll off and, and hand it to them. And so you can imagine these, there's this boy here, and now you guys are going to be the disciples. And Jesus begins to, in his hand, he blesses it and begins to give it out. And this, these, this lad, I can imagine, as he watches his food go away. The Lord said, set the men down. Now, I like that order. I think the men ate first, you know. <laughs> hey, man, come on, man. Where were you there? Right? And, uh, and, uh, and <laughs> anyway, the, the, the men all sat down in the grass here, and God made enough of men, women, children, everybody. But uh, it was a different day, I understand. But the men, the men sat down and ate. Maybe this lad thought, I wonder if there's going to be any left. And they began to give it out, began to take it, began to take it. And so I don't know if he was, how old are you, six? How old? You're six. I don't know if he was six. How old are you? Six. six? How old are you? Ten. I think he was probably closer to ten to twelve, you would guess. But he wasn't where they would call him. After twelve, he would have been probably used a different word there. But the lad is just, I imagine this boy lived local. Because if you've been there three days, if you're like me, I'd ate the lunch the first day. Right? But he had his food, so I think he was going home at night, you know. And he was coming back the next day, and he brought a lunch. So these other people had nowhere to go. They probably were camping out, and they'd run out of food. And uh, you can put the food back in there. I just wanted to give an idea of of a lad. So here's a boy. Can you imagine James giving up his lunch? I don't don't know if you'd give up your lunch. You know, can you imagine these guys giving up their lunch and giving it to the Lord Jesus? And so something like this, he was carrying with two fishes. Those are a little big. You guys would be seated. You all did a great job. I like your dinosaurs on that shirt. And so Jesus begins to break it, and it's a little, and all of a sudden, it feeds everyone. So I want to think about the little for a second. This little is given to the Lord, 
from this lad and the little, well, let me say about the loaves and fishes, this little. First of all, they were given. They were given. I thought about taking you there. We won't take the time tonight, but you could go to that widow woman that comes by the offering plate. Jesus is watching all these people putting in all their, with pomp and circumstance, putting all their much in. I wrote in my Bible, how do you give more than much? Jesus said she gave it all. Two mites was more than much. <laughs> she gave all. It was a little, but it was given. It was given to the Lord. Uh, you look, we have people in our church that, uh, widows and different things, that, that they don't have much on fixed incomes, couldn't give much, but it's given. It's given to the Lord. In the Lord's hand, little is much when God is in it. So they were given. Look, God can use whatever we will give to Him. Whatever we give to Him. Now, some of us, uh, some of you could, could give much. And so God wouldn't maybe be pleased with that two mites if God knows what your bank account's like or what your ability is. But God is pleased when we give to Him. We give of ourselves. We give financially. We give of our time. We give of our talents to the Lord. They were given. God can use whatever we give to Him. I love with Moses. What's in your hand, Moses? Just a staff. And God began to use that rod, become known as the rod of God. What's in your hand? They were given. Then they were growing. They were growing. What we give to God, He multiplies. What we give to the Lord, He makes it go further than we could ever make it go. Think about that. God's plan is better than your plan. God can make it go further than you can. They were growing. Then they were gathered. I like this. After lunch, when we have lunch in here during the school year, I don't like people throwing out food. And we throw out enough of it as it is as Americans, but I want to send home as much as we can. Now, you can't send home a half-eaten can of SpaghettiOs. You can't do it because the parents get mad about it. It'll be, half, it'll be everywhere when the kid brings it home after shaking it all around. But we try to not waste. God didn't waste. I like that example. Uh, Proverbs talks about that, that the diligent... He, he roasts what he takes in the hunt, you know, in hunting. He doesn't leave it. The slothful man, he won't do anything but the diligent. And the Lord doesn't wait. He gathers it. God doesn't waste. He'll use it all. And that makes me encouraged because God doesn't waste when it comes to his church. He'll use every single one. He'll use all. He uses all of us. Every part, every joint has a function. Every part of the body is to the increase of the body. And so he'll use you. But let me say this, it was never about the lad, as much as his part was to play in this story, and it wasn't about the little. Lastly, it was all about the Lord. It's all about the Lord. What a privilege that God lets us in on what he's doing. Do you understand? You think, well, he fed 5,000 people. Do you understand God every day fed two and a half million people? And he had no five loaves or two fish to start with. They just came outside and the whole place was covered with manna. So what's your point? God didn't need the lad. He didn't need the five loaves and two fishes. But God will use you if you'll let him. You see, sometimes we preach and the Bible says we're to pray for laborers. And I, and I think we ought to. And, and God uh, will, does need people to, in, in that realm to, to, to work and serve. But at the same time, I want you to know God is not hard up. God is all powerful and he is able God. And we don't have to pray to God like he can't do something he couldn't accomplish. And if, if someone didn't, you know, well, good thing so-and-so and this could put in the plate or do this or we wouldn't. No, God, he is able without my help. Praise the Lord for that. But God will use you if you let him. Hey, this lad had a story that the rest of his life he told. I'll tell you, one day I took a lunch. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, what kind of lunch was it? I didn't even eat it. Well, tell, I mean, can you imagine the story? He was telling his grandkids that. To the day he died, I mean, that was, his, that was his moment, right? That was his great story. No one had a better story than that, right? That was my lunch. <laughs> I don't know if he lived long enough to read Matthew's or John's account or anything. That was my lunch. Jesus, Jesus used my lunch. I was the lad. Oh, don't you love that? Think about it. Put yourself in the story a little bit. But he'll use you if you'll let him. What a privilege to be used of God. See, it was this lad's privilege 
to let God have his lunch. And I, trust me, he ate all he wanted. That's what the Bible says. They ate until they couldn't eat no more. In verse 11, it said, And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. They were hurting. I mean, it was painful they had eaten so much, as much as they would. There was no lack. And then lastly, like I said, the lad, the little, the Lord, and we'll be done. The Lord. Oh, so much could be said about the Lord. I'm trying to limit to this story, but our Lord is wonderful. He is the altogether lovely one. He is our supply. He is our support. He is our sufficiency, like I've already said. And he's our Savior. I say tonight, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, your personal Savior, you're the one missing out. You see, it's like church tonight. You know, I hate anyone that not here tonight. I hate that they can't be here. I hate that they're missing out. But we're getting it and we're enjoying it and we're thrilled to be in God's house and hear the blessings that were testified about and hear the choir and, and, and sing together and pray together and, and hear the preaching of God's word. I, I hate for anyone else to miss out, but, but I want to tell you, uh, he's a wonderful savior and heaven's going to be wonderful, whoever's there, but I'd hate for you to miss out. Not just miss out on heaven, miss out on this day and tomorrow and every day getting to walk with him. Getting to know Him. Getting to live with Him. Praise the Lord. He is a wonderful Savior. There is no lack with Him. No lack. Never. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior or not, I want to urge you. I'm looking around at people I know. But if you're here and you don't know if you're, that your sins have been forgiven, if you died, you'd be in heaven. Oh, wouldn't you be saved tonight? Wouldn't you trust Jesus tonight? Wouldn't you believe on the Lord tonight? See, it wasn't the lad, it wasn't the little, but it was the Lord. You ever wonder, why did God use this lad? Like I said, he didn't need him. He, he produced manna every day for two and a half million people. He didn't need the lad. The, the manna, it could have, could have just been manna again. He could have told the people, go pick it up instead of go sit down. But why did he use him? Well, let me give you three things as we uh, wrap it up here. Look at it as we think about the Lord. Why did the Lord use this lad? Well, first of all, in verse 9, notice there is a lad. What's the next word, church? Here. There is a lad here. First of all, he was present. He was present. Here. I think how many that God would have used, could have used, uh, more talented people in their life God would have used and could have used. And, and some would say, oh, I wish they, he would have used, but they weren't there. See, God will use those that are there, that are present. That'll be there. That'll be faithful. Uh, like we were talking about R.G. Smith earlier and someone 50 years serving the Lord. And, and, and I don't know if he speaks any of the African languages or not, but he's gone over there and he's helped get other people involved in it. And he's been there. He's let God use him for what he could do in his time. Listen, you only get one shot at life. You don't get another chance. There's no do-overs, there's no reset buttons. And God will use those that will be there where God is working. That boy could have said, I've been coming there three days, dear Jesus, and today they're playing baseball. I think I'm going to go over and play baseball. But he was there. There is a lad here. Why, well, but he was glad he was there. Maybe he didn't feel the best that day, but he was still there. He was here. He was here. There is a lad here. He was present. Number two, I want you to notice he was participating. He was participating. I love faithful people. I love people that I've for years been teaching this Sunday school. I've for years been going out soul winning. I've for years been discipling people. Just faithful. For years, every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, you look out. They're here. They're, they're faithful. I think that pleases the Lord. He was participating. We know from other accounts that these people had been three days, and this boy was still here. And, and can I say this? He was at the front. He had gotten to the front. He worked his way to the front. Because he couldn't probably see, you know, shorter than the men. And, and uh, uh, by the way, sit toward the front. <laughs> That'd be a good time right there. Uh, sit near. There's a lot of distractions in the back. Get close. He was nearby. They saw this lad with 15,000 people. It'd be easy to overlook a boy. But he was near. I believe he had been drawing nigh to God. Maybe he had been working his way through the crowd, you know. He was trying to get close to Jesus. He was present. He was participating. 
And maybe he heard when the Lord was asking Philip what we're going to do. And maybe when they were starting to look around, how many loaves have you? And they started talking amongst the disciples. What, how many do we have? What do we got? And uh, maybe, maybe they said 200 penny worth because they asked Judas, how much money's in the bag? And J Judas said, we got 200 pennies. And, and, and so maybe that's kind of how it went. And the lad's hearing this. He says, well, look, if you guys need food, I've got this. He was, he was present. He was participating. Lastly, why'd the Lord use the lad? Well, I believe he was pleasing to the Lord. Now, you don't see this in the scriptures, but maybe while the Lord was teaching this boy, he wasn't falling asleep. He wasn't, he wasn't playing on a game or looking somewhere else. I think he was, he was engaged. He was listening. He was, he was a part of what Jesus was saying. He was nodding his head. He was in agreement. Uh, can I say, when you give yourself to the Lord, when you give what you have to God, he's pleased with that. He's pleased with that. I like what someone said about giving your best. Uh, when you give your best to God, God's, no matter how bad your best may be compared to someone else, if you give your best, God's pleased with that. But if you give less than your best, no matter how great that is, because maybe you're a really talented or gifted person, but you give less than your best, God's not pleased with that. This boy gave what he had. Look, someone else could have given more. Naboth, Abigail, they brought all, a big spread for David's crew, way more than five loaves and two fishes. But this is all this boy had. He couldn't bring much. This is all he had. But God was pleased with that. God could use that. And you might think, I don't have a lot. I can't offer a lot. And I'll tell you, if you'll give it to God, God can use it. And God will be pleased with it. He was pleasing to the Lord. When you give your all, even if it's just two mites, when you give your all, God's pleased with that. This boy was a simple boy, a silent boy, a surrendered boy. Are, are you surrendered to the Lord? This little was given. It was growing in the Lord's hand. It was, it was gathered up, wasn't wasted. As we think about our Lord, He used this boy, I believe, because He was there. He was present. He was participating. He was pleasing to the Lord. Can, can I ask you, are you giving God your everything? Let me bring this conclusion. I love the conclusion, verse 14. After they all eaten and they were full, they should have been in a good mood, right? They've eaten all they could eat. Kind of like after Thanksgiving meal, they're happy. They've eaten it all, or eaten all they could. There were still 12 baskets full. Then, verse 14, notice the conclusion the people had. They, they did the wrong thing with the conclusion, but they had the right conclusion. Look at verse 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. This is that Messiah. This is the one we've been looking for. If you keep reading, they're going to try to make him a king and, and they, they, because they ate the bread. But, but they're right. You know what they're saying? Hey, look, this is, he is worthy of your everything. This is the Messiah. This is the promised one. Can I say, surrender to him today. He is worthy of your everything. Look, he is, I can tell you, after 25 years since the Lord really got a hold of my life and I surrendered to him, it is worth it. It's worth it. He's worthy of your everything. Give him your life. Give him your all. Whatever is left of it, whatever amount of it, give God your everything. Would you bow with me in prayer?